Hi everyone and welcome back to Lunchtime with Compassion. Yeah, a huge warm welcome to everybody who's tuned in today. We love the fact that you've been able to tune in with us for Lunchtime with Compassion today. Um, I'm Phil Briggs, I'm the Senior Partnerships Manager for Compassion UK in the north of England uh, and I've been with C Compassion just under five years now. Amazing and I'm Anna Durante. I have been with Compassion now for just around six months and I am head of events over here. So we just want to welcome you all. As you know, each week we focus on a different country and this week it's Indonesia. Yeah, absolutely. And hey, we would love for you to get involved today and participate in the conversation. You'll notice there is a, a chat function which you can comment in and we just love reading your comments and we've got a team of people who are going to be responding to your questions to you throughout this event and hey why not just let us know who you are where you're from and uh, which part of which local church you're a part of today amazing um and just i've got some really cool stats here for you as well um across the uk and ireland we support um 5372 children and that's across 615 projects which is amazing Wow, that really is incredible. And uh, here's some more um, facts. Um, in this time in Indonesia, even amongst the difficulties uh, and the challenges that they face in this season of COVID right now. But I want to bring you some incredible news, some great news from our frontline church partners in Indonesia. I want to tell you this, that they have currently managed to deliver 422,401 food packs and 368,308 hygiene kits and providing medical support to 20,601 individuals. That is incredible. Yeah, wow, that is amazing. Praise God for that. Um, just to give you a quick overview of what the next 30 minutes are going to look like, I'm going to be sharing a story about a family um, in Indonesia who um, have been stuck in isolation for 14 days. Yeah, I'm going to be interviewing one of our Indonesian field staff um, so that you can hear firsthand about the complexities, the difficulties and the challenges uh, that they face right now in this pandemic and, and what the local church is being enabled to do in this season from their first-hand point of view. And of course, we'll spend um, a time in prayer as well. We would love you to be involved with that as well as we pray uh, for these guys in Indonesia. And we'll have a video as well and a Q&A session, uh, which you can be involved with today. Amazing. Well, let's get straight into it. I'm going to share an amazing story with you now. This story is called 14 Days in Isolation. Hardworking mother Lam Rinta cared for her father-in-law, who was suffering from cancer, until he passed away in hospital. However, the difficult situation was worsened when a health official arrived at the family's home and instructed them to go into isolation. They were suspected of being infected by COVID-19 because of the father-in-law's death. Suddenly I felt accused like a police fugitive. My family and I were not allowed to talk to neighbours or stand on the porch of our house. We were completely locked in, said Lam Rinta. My neighbours even spread gossip about my family. The mandatory two-week isolation period stopped her from earning money. She also wasn't able to carry out her duties as a staff assistant at the Compassion Child Development Centre, where her boys are registered. The pandemic forced her husband to stop working two months earlier, leaving the family with no source of income. Feeling desperate, Lam Rinta shared their situation with a Compassion tutor. The staff brought fresh fruit, vegetables, chicken, milk, tofu, soy cake and rice to support the family, to keep them healthy and meet their daily needs. Every day, the centre staff came to Lam Rinta's house to check on them and every four days, the family received a new parcel of groceries. Much to the family's relief, their COVID-19 tests came back negative. I cried because of the joy in my heart. I cried because God protected my family, said Lam Rinta. I cried because finally our life will get back to normal again and there will be no more isolation at home. Well, hello, friends. It's, it's great to see you today. Um, uh, thank you so much for joining us all the way from Indonesia. Uh, it's great to have you with us. Welcome. Hi, Bill. 
thank you thank you so much for having me uh, terima kasih apa kabar in indonesia language oh thank you so much i'm not sure i'll be able to repeat that well um, but <laughs> <laughs> thank you for teaching me my first indonesian um, reading um, you know Franz, it's, it's an incredible privilege can i say just to be able to spend this time with you um, today and um, to to discuss a, a variety of things really but um, i want you to know right now before we start that we're we're with you we're standing with you beside you we're praying for you and we're going to be doing all of those things towards the end of this time as well friends i wondered um because we all understand right now that covid19 um in this season really does affect the poorest of the poor um, the most uh, they're the most vulnerable to this right now and i wondered if you could explain to us um from your context how how this is affecting um your um local churches the, the city and uh, indonesia as a country as well yeah thank you so much bill the covid 19 really damaged our 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 city our country and even the village where the, the church partner exists. So uh, many, many people, they lose their job and in going increasingly every day. Last two months in my province alone, 8,000, they lost their job. They lost their job and they bring nothing to their house for the family. So because of this one, the lack of nutrition being <coughs> I mean, the children, they don't have anything to, to eat, the proper meal for them. So this one is effect only, also the effect for the, the health of their children. So increasing malnutrition, I've seen with my own eyes how several families, they, they don't have anything to eat, even in several, in, in, in several days. They just, they just drink, they just eat whatever they have. That's, that's the tremendous damage that I've seen here in, in Indonesia, in, in several places, in the church, that in the partners, the, the village where the partners, uh, the church partner. Wow, that's, um, I, I find that quite tough to hear, Franz. Um, mm -hmm. I, I'm, I'm really quite emotionally stirred by it, if I'm honest with you. And, um, you know, it's uh, the, you're bringing us the truth, and you know the the, the truth is is what, what what we need to be discussing right now. These children <clears throat> and the church partners are greatly affected by this season, and um, you know it's important that we understand and that we pray with you as well. And um, but, Franz, I wondered, could you could you explain to us what the response is in this season from the local church partners in Indonesia? Yeah. Actually, this is the first experience that the local partners experience in, in years of their ministry. The chairs are, the Sunday service stopped because of the restriction for the government. The public, 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 uh, public space is also stopped and everything for slot was closed and the Sunday service as well. So our children, they're not able to come to the, to the project anymore. They have to stay home. So yeah. what, our, what our church are doing at the moment, they think they have to go, go out from the, uh, their normal habit. So what they're doing right now is they're going and visit the family, visit the, the, the children at their house. That's what the church are doing today. That's the church mobilized going out to meet the needs going out to yeah reach to the families and you know being the hands and feet of jesus of course in this time and yeah you know, I, I love that the local church in terms of what you're saying is is responding in this time and, and meeting such crucial needs so yeah thanks friends we as we all experience lockdown and we try and think about what does the season ahead look like for us i wonder whether you could explain to us what you think um, things might look like for you in Indonesia in say three months time. In the three months time, I don't think that we will go any better. 
Right. Not only three months time, Fair Health is go for another year or years to come because of the COVID really hit a lot of area. So I don't think that it's got any better. You know, uh, most of our par just partner there in, in the village. So once because they're in the village, they, they don't have any uh, access for like, like distribution uh, mask, mask of or hygiene, hygiene, uh, health hygiene. So they have to send it from the city. So what the church are doing today, they mobilize their youth. They they doing. Uh, I say this a blessing in these guys, despite all the difficult situation that the church facing. But now the church moving forward, they see that. They cannot just stand and waiting uh, and see the situation, what is going on. But now they started to to be the answer for the community, for the family. Like churches, they they use their compound. Now they make a for the food security. They planting the vegetables and the vegetables they can share to their their church members. The youth, they 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 do the make the mass because in the remote area very hard to for them to get a mass the masker the supply mass supply for for the children and their family so they're the one they make by their hands use their hands all the youth they collectively sit together and make the mass and they distribute to to the family and to the community what i've seen is the church now they be the answer for the community and the project staff, they see they, how they, they're growing in their faith, growing in their knowledge, and see how to solve the problems through, uh, in this uh, difficult situation. That's how I feel amazed seeing, seeing the chairs and the project staff. Oh, that's incredible. That's absolutely incredible. So they're, they're being provided food, and, and uh, that's yeah. really important <coughs> that they're receiving this nutrition in this season um, as well. And the face masks, of course, uh, are important, and the hand sanitization, because the church is, is literally educating them on how to stay safe in this yeah. season, right, isn't it? So that's, that's wonderful to hear. I, I'm also wondering, France, in, in this time, as, as they're not able to go to the projects and they're not able to go to the church, what the, what the response is in terms of helping grow faith and and, and knowing the love of God at this time. And thank, thank you, Phil. I have a lot of experiences, a lot of stories come from, from our project staff. Because of this situation, they start now, all the project staff, they're going and visit the, the, the children at their house because they know the children, because of this lockdown, they usually go to the project, they usually uh, go to go to the school, meet their friends, but because of the COVID-19, they have to stay back at their house. They have to stay back at their home. In the remote area, especially, kids, they like to play around with their friends, but today they have to stay back at their very simple house, very simple, simple compound, so it's quite difficult for them. By knowing that, the project staff, the church, they go and visit. They bring some some games with them, some tools with them, and let them. They play with the kids in their house. They play with the kids in in their in their family with their family, just to ensure that the the kids still have some activity at their house, so they will not be uh, emotionally affected their, their their life. So how the church are doing for the kids and the fam the, the family. That's so good. I, I'm, I'm loving the sound of, of, of games being play, uh, played and, and having a bit of fun yeah. together. That's so important in this season. But with all that to say, friends, you know, I'm, I'm, just, I'm just really, my heart's really stirred right now that I, I think we should pray. I think we should pray together um, for, for, for all of the challenges <clears throat> being faced in Indonesia right now by yourselves and the local churches and the villages and and, um, and for all the children and families that um, are just in, in need right now and, and, and need, yeah. to, need the local church and the Lord of God. So let's, let's pray for our frontline church partners, shall we, uh, friends? Yeah. And, uh, 
and, and, and that they'll continue to provide um, the children and communities with the hygiene. So let's pray. Yes. Thank you, Lord. Father, I thank you um, that you are a loving God and that you have your hand of protection um, around all of these children and families in Indonesia right now. Father, I, I thank you um, that you are our provider and protector. And Lord, I ask right now in the middle of this COVID-19 season, God, that you would wrap your loving arms around every single family and child represented in Jesus' name. Thank you, Lord. Heavenly Father, I remember our project staff, those who are on the front lines, those who are giving their life to serve the children, serve the church, serve the community, serve the family. Father, we pray and we ask your protection be upon them, Lord God, as they visit the house, as they visit the children, as they visit their, their family. Some of them, they have to walk. Some of them, they may use motorbike. Father, I pray in Jesus' name, you protect them, Lord God, so they will see how you use them mightily to bless the children and bless the community. Thank you, Lord. We just uphold you and we pray and we just surrender them into your hands. In Jesus' mighty name, we pray. Thank you, Lord. Yeah. Father, we just also lift up the, the, the government of the country, the leadership of, the, of, of, of Indonesia, Father, that you would give them the wisdom um, and the steps to take um, to keep everybody safe in this season, Lord, that, um, that we know that whilst we make our plans, that you direct our steps. And God, we pray. Um, for the most incredible impartation of wisdom on, on leadership from the government, in the local church, and, and within Compassion staff as well. Lord, we thank you for them, and God, we just, uh, we, we just lift them up to you right now in Jesus' name. Thank you, Lord. Amen. 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 Well, friends, it's, it's my incredible privilege to share this time with you and just letting prayer and uh, we are again friends i just want to say that we are standing with you beside you believing with you and consistently praying with you um for god to um just protect you all at this time and and to keep you well yeah. and safe thank you so much Bill. thank you also for all the sponsor thank you so much for this we know that you are also facing this the the same situation as we do here in Indonesia, but you still give your, your pray, you still give your support to support our children here in Indonesia. So I thank you so much. Terima kasih banyak. God may bless all of you. Oh, thanks so much, friends. Bless you. Bye for now. Bye. Thank you so much, Phil. God bless you. Wow, that was such an incredible interview, Phil. Just, um, just being able to hear from friends and just hearing the realities that they're facing over there. Really, really quite insightful. Yeah, really powerful, um, wasn't it? Just to hear from friends and, and, and all of the things that are happening right now. You know, COVID-19 will hit those in poverty the hardest. Um, I mean, for those who, who live in extreme poverty, everything about COVID-19 is magnified you know the risk and the fear the uncertainty yeah. and the life and death realities and those living in poverty are, are the most vulnerable in every single way uh, they have no safety net access to, to uh, safe and clean water is a, is, is a luxury for many and you know if parents can't go out and work due to the mandatory isolation families can't eat and that's the reality yeah but thank god for the local church that are over there it is incredible and i love what franz was talking about and how he was explaining the new initiatives they were coming up with and um, with like making the face masks it's just absolutely incredible and they're positioned so well to be able to reach the children and the family so i just thank god so much that you know they're there and they're supporting in in the ways that they can do yeah praise god for the local church absolutely amen you know Compassion UK are supporting an intervention in Indonesia to support families during COVID-19. 
Indonesia is one of the most populated countries in the world and has a struggling health system. Uh, to, to respond to food security issues caused by economic hardship during COVID-19 lockdown, we will ensure essential food and health kits um, are home delivered by Compassion staff to 1,120 families. Food packs include rice, cooking oil, sugar, tea, eggs, green beans, meat, fruit, tofu and bread. And health and hygiene packs include face masks, hand soap, detergents, vitamins, antibacterial spray, hand sanitizer, a thermometer and paracetamol. In addition to providing practical support to keep families healthy, this intervention is letting families know right now that they are loved, valued and not alone. Yeah, wow, that is incredible. And if you feel you'd like to donate to that appeal, um, there's going to be a button that comes up in your chat function. So you can click straight on that and it will take you to direct to be able to donate, which would be incredible. Um, so we're coming to the end of our time today. Um, so we just want to say thank you um, for joining us. It's been amazing um, to hear this update from Indonesia. Um, we're going to leave you with a quick video. Um, it's another um, extended update um, on what's happening over there from a few of our teams. Which is cool. Yeah, and hey, if you want to join us next week, um, we'll be back at the same time um, giving you an update from Mexico. And uh, we'll, we'll be connecting with one of their field staff uh, there and we will be praying for the nation of Mexico. So we'd love you to join us. Amazing. Well, goodbye and Terry Makassi. God bless everyone. God bless. <laughs> Bye for now. Apa kabar for all of you that have visited Indonesia? We have almost 800 projects now, our church partners. They close the activities, the children, they have to stay at home. And then we have to imagine that they stay in the poor condition of housing. And this is the situation that faced uh, by the children that we serve together. In my province alone, today there are 8,000 of uh, people, they lose their job because of this COVID-19. And families, they are facing hunger because their parents lose their job. They have nothing to bring to their family, even the food for them to eat every day. The local church, Compassion, is still trying to reach out uh, all the children one by one to know them they are in good condition and also health. What we do is we also make sure that they have food security and second, they also uh, have the health support. But the food distribution is not only the food. So when they meet or they engage, uh, the, uh, we always ask the question, how's the family, how's the health condition, and how's the situation? Many families, they were in tears because the church and the, the, the Compassion Project is the first one to come to their rescue and provide the food that they really they need in that time. And we've seen even the children themselves, now they're not thinking of themselves alone, but they start to think of others. Uh, there's one project in uh, Solo, Putri, the name, uh, received uh, a gift from her sponsor. She did not use the money for herself or family. And what she did with her mother, they, they make package like a lunch box uh, for 50 people and give it to church for the church to distribute for the poor. But the family basically is not in abundance. In the scarcity, you can steal the blessing for the rest of the people. When they, uh, when they are jobless, they still have compassion, they still have you as, as a sponsor, who are so kind for spending your money to help our children in here. It means everything for the family in here. So thank you so much. All we can do is just to pray for all of you. Like the children, project staff, and the local churches in here, always pray and support all of you in our prayer every day, every single day. So thank you so much. 
Please pray for us. Thank you so much. Terima kasih. Terima kasih.